August 2024, the economy is terrible. Are we headed for a recession? What do you think? Are we headed for a food shortage? What if an attack on our country takes out the power grid? Should we start preparing? And where do we start at? How do we go about that? Stay tuned and we will look at ways to prepare for the future and how to prepare to possibly having little to no food. There's two areas we can look at, financial or survival. Today, we're looking at ways to stay above ground and feed you and your family. If you've watched my previous videos, you know that water is the most important thing. You can probably live on two quarts of water per person, but you're best to have a gallon of water per person. In the event that there is no or limited food, you're going to need that gallon of water. We can go, there's, there's a debate on how many days we can go without eating, but it averages, because everybody's different, it averages between eight days and 21 days. But water, you can only go three days. Three days without water and you're below ground, okay? If you cannot get water, it is going to be a bleak ending very rapidly. You can only go three days without water. So I don't, I don't know your, your plans for water. Um, I do know I've talked to some people that's got a, um, a, a, I don't know what you call it, a belly, and they put it in their tub so they can fill it up with water. And then they would have that. I mean, I don't know how many gallons that is, but it has to be a lot. I had a gentleman telling me about that. The thing that confuses me about that, do you fill it up now? And if you fill it up now, is that water going to stay fresh? So these are things we have to look at, is if our water, if we can keep our water fresh, because you can't wait until it happens because it, there, it, you won't be able to get the water. We all, we all need to take measures to make sure that we have food and it's easier than you think. So some real easy things to stockpile is peanut butter. Peanut butter is high in protein and you, a lot of times it's buy one, get one free if you have Winn-Dixie's where you're at. It goes on sale often. Peanut butter is a great option. And then you can go into other uh, things like canned meats, like tuna fish, canned chicken, and spam. And all of those seem to have a very long shelf life. So you could literally just get you a little tub that maybe fits under your bed, okay? That slides right under your bed, out of your way, and fill it with these things. And that way you can check it every year, see where the dates are. And if, you know, if we don't have an emergency, that is a blessing, a blessing. But the way the world is today, I would love to see everybody get a little bit prepared. A couple other things you can throw in that tub would be dry beans. Whatever dry beans you like. Dry beans are high in protein. They typically have potassium in them, which is really important for your electric light level. So um, we always have navy beans and pintos. Those are our two beans, but throw some beans in there, some one pound bags of beans. Um, it would be ever how big your family is. I will tell you in my house, we have 25 pound bag of navy beans and we have 25 pounds of pinto beans. So, it, but it's the two of us and uh, we're, it, it would last us and I'm going to share. I mean, if, you know, if the world goes to down the drain, I'm not going to hoard my food. I'm not going to do it. I mean, we are put here to help each other. Okay. So keep that in mind. If you have neighbors that you, you think might need help, be kind and, and have enough in there that you can share. When it comes to starving, you don't want to see anybody starve to death. And it, when it, if it ever comes to that point, we would not eat like we do today. I mean, look how many times we eat and we just overeat. We just keep eating and eating and eating. And then we're like, oh, we're so stuffed. And then we lay down on the couch and watch a movie. That is not how that would be. That is certainly not how that would happen. And then if you're very limited on what you can stockpile, think about putting some pasta in there. Think about putting a container of oil. Now we use grapeseed oil in our house and it seems to have a, a longer shelf life before it goes rancid. So that is one thing that I would put in my bin. Canned vegetables, I would probably put cans of corn in there. Um, green beans, peas, anything like that. Um, you're looking for really a good nutritional value. Um, and that's what you want to look at. You want to look at having things in that tub that have great nutritional value. You may only be able to eat a fourth of a cup of what's in there a day to ration yourself out. 
So you want to make sure that it has the best nourishment that, that you can store without refrigeration. You can also put evaporated milk in there. That would be a, a very good thing to have. Salt would be an excellent thing to have. In one of my previous videos, I talk about the three top things that you should always, always have um, in your house in the event of any type of emergency. So I will link that at the end of this video. It's definitely worth watching. Um, and you could do spaghetti, Kansas spaghetti sauce and pasta. Um, I mean, one of those tubs that go under your bed, the, the ones that are only about that tall and they're probably about, whoops, about that long. Um, you can put a lot of things in there. And if you have room, put two or three of them in there. It, I mean, if nothing else, when you're short on money, you can go to your stockpile and then replenish it when you have more money. So it's a win-win, win-win, okay? So let's talk about the power grid going out. You know, that's one of probably my, my significant worries that I have is I think it would be very easy for a power grid to go down. I think that probably our enemies know a lot about making that happen. And so we have to think about that. So what does that really mean? Have you ever seen the whole world with no lights at all? I mean, try to imagine that. There would be no light whatsoever. Have you ever had a thunderstorm and your electric went out in your house and you tried to get up and find a flashlight? It's difficult when there's no light whatsoever. So if you just think about that aspect when the power grid goes down, then there's a few things you, you have to know. You have to, you have to have some flashlights, you have to have batteries, candles. Um, I have talked to a couple people that have kerosene uh, lamps and they keep a couple gallons of kerosene. So, and you wouldn't be able to burn it a long time when you're gonna run out. But um, unless you're gonna go to bed with the sun and up with the sun, and you have no emergencies through the night, you know, nothing with your animals, nothing happens, then you wouldn't need any candles or kerosene lamps. But that's not realistic. So you need to have something like that. And then let's just think about water. If the electric goes out, the electric is what pumps your water to you in your house when you turn the faucet on. So there's a big pump somewhere. Don't really know where it's at, but I know electric runs it, okay? So that's the first thing. You're not gonna be able to turn on your faucet and get water. The second thing is, if you have well water, you is a pump inside that well. It is not gonna turn on, it is not gonna pump your water. And I did a video on putting a hand pump on your, on your well. So that may be something else that you wanna look into, okay? Um, and I'll link that video at the end um, as well. And another thing electricity is needed for is to pump gasoline. So I also have talked to people who have generators and and they, you know, they feel like they're okay, that everything will be fine. Well, here's the problem, is unless you have a 50 gallon drum with gas in it in your yard, the gas station cannot pump fuel. So they cannot pump gas. So when you really sit and you really think about today in the world, what could possibly happen and how prepared you are, I think it, it is worthy of a second look. I really think it should be a fa you should sit down as a family and discuss it in the event of these emergencies. Many things have happened lately, and we all know they have. You know, AT and T went down, and there's been several things that happened. I'm not a conspiracy person. Um, I'm just not, but I'm also not a naive person. So I just thought we'd sit and we'd have a chat about it. I would like to know if, if you have thought of anything different than what I've said in the video, because I think we all should share and help each other get prepared. And the biggest thing I told you at the beginning is we would have no internet. How in the world do you live with no internet, right? So, and that's one thing to think about. You know, we're so dependent on the internet now. If we wanna know something, boom, 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 on the internet. If we wanna know who has a certain thing, on the internet. If we wanna know how to do something, on the internet. So that is something serious to think about, that there's no internet. So if you don't have a book telling you how to do whatever you're trying to do, build a fire, um, preserve food, uh, if you don't have a book that tells you that, you're not gonna get on the internet and find it. Okay, so that would be um, that would be devastating to a whole lot of people, including me. Um, I think I could probably live without the lights and and uh, the electric um, 
I, I just think I probably could could live without it, but man, I would not want to live without my internet. Uh, then you have to go back to the really old days and read and let's hope that doesn't happen.